You know, authority in a local church, authority in a church body such as this one here, uh, is ordained by God. So it's not just, you know, a man wants to take control and, you know, wants to ha have rule in the house of God. I mean, God has set up uh, certain offices and he set up a certain structure uh, for a couple of reasons. And we'll go through a couple of those reasons just in the verses we'll see here. But in 1 Corinthians 12, uh, verse uh, 27 onwards, it says, Now ye are the body of Christ, and members in particular. And you know, last week we talked about the difference between the body of Christ and the church, which can be called the body of Christ, but is a gathering of people within the body of Christ uh, for the purpose of meeting together for Jesus Christ. And God hath set some in the church. So he's put these things in place in the church. First, apostles. Secondarily, prophets. Thirdly, teachers. After that, miracles and gifts of healing, helps, governments, uh, diversities of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Are all workers of miracles? Have all the gifts of healing? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? But covet earnestly the best gifts, and yet show I unto you a more excellent way. Just an interesting point on that last verse. If you know 1 Corinthians 13 is a chapter that's famous for the chapter of love, you know, charity. Uh, I'm not sure if you ever realized, but you know how it ends off in chapter 12 saying that there are these gifts, there are these positions in a church, and, and they have all their reasons and they have all their purposes. But then he says there at the end there, you know, you can covet, so desire these offices, desire these gifts, but yet I show unto you a more excellent way. So he actually goes into 1 Corinthians 13 talking about charity, saying that we should desire charity even above authority, above the different spiritual gifts that can be given to different believers. And I just think that, that, that that's interesting that, um, you know, love, how love is emphasized there. And also the fact that it's talking about charity in the, in the local church. You know, the Bible says, you know, that you do good to all men, especially of those that are of the household of faith. Um, so we see here that, you know, there, there are different uh, like positions within the church and, you know, some don't necessarily exist anymore, like apostles, for example. But we see here that there are different positions. They all play their different role. They're all there for a purpose. So God has these different positions. They all play their part. But one thing we see here is that they're not all the same. You know, there's all these different parts and all these different members. You know, you read in 1 Corinthians 12, the body being uh, different, uh, different members of a body, but, you know, they're all required. They all play their part. They're all important. And it's the same in, in a local church. Everything is important. But one is not more valuable than another. Just because one person has more authority than another in a church, it doesn't mean that they are more valuable or highly valued in God's eyes. You know, it's like at your workplace. You know, maybe... The, maybe the, the company values them more, that's why they get paid more, but the, you know, they're not more valuable as a person. They're just another person. They're just another sinner like you are, even though they may be getting paid more than you, they may be in a position of higher authority. So authority does not dictate um, value. And, you know, everyone's different because, you know, God doesn't, if, if God wanted us all the same, he would have created us all the same. He would have created us all to look the same and act the same and talk the same. You know, God doesn't want us to be clones of each other. Um, and often sometimes, you know, you know, sometimes people think that Christianity is this cookie cutter. Everyone needs to look and dress and act and do the same thing. Uh, but no, um, you know, not everybody may have a desire to, to um, you know, be a bishop or a deacon. Um, people have different things that and desires God maybe have, has given them or things that they want to do for God and we can all play a part. You know, one person doing one work for God is not more valuable uh, than somebody else, even though there may be more authority. Just like if you're a bishop or a deacon, you're going to have more authority than just a regular church member. But that doesn't mean a, a regular church member can't do greater things for God. You know, you could go soul winning much more than I do. You could do much more for God with the things you have even though in this local church here, um, I'm, I'm accountable and I have the authority here. Ephesians uh, 4, let's go there. Ah. Reading from verse 7, But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Wherefore he saith, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Now that he ascended... What is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? 
He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. And he gave some apostles, and some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. That verse is a bit of a bit of a mouthful, but what I wanted to sort of mention here, and um, you know, this might sound funny coming from me, but you know, we see here that God has given gifts unto men, and part of those gifts are the authority in a church. So apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers. And you're saying, you know, Victor, are you trying to say that you're, you're God's gift to this church? Well, in a sense, I am. You know, I am God's gift to this church in the sense that God has put an authority in this church and he's given this church a bishop to lead it and to take care of it. But, you know, it doesn't necessarily dictate the value of the gift. The gift just, a gift just means that you didn't do anything to earn it. It's something that God gave to you. Um, you can determine yourself the value of this gift that God has given to you. So, um, yeah, you know, uh, bishops and deacons um, and this authority in the church are, are given, are gifts given to God for certain reasons. And we see here why. It says in verse 12, for the perfecting of the saints, so to perfect us and to, to help us to, to grow in our faith and in our walk, for the work of the ministry. And this is something that's important because a lot of bishops and deacons these days, they, they, they uh, preach and they, and they have that position, but are they doing the work of the ministry? You know, are they helping people grow in their faith? Are they doing the soul winning? Are they getting out there and preaching the gospel and being that example that people can follow um, in terms of reaching souls and reaching the lost for the work of the ministry and for the edifying of the body of Christ? So not only building you up in your personal life, but actually helping to grow and uh, add people to this body. Um, and why do they do this? Well, we see here later on, it says that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love. So this is how they ought to, to minister grace to the hearers. Uh, they should speak the truth in love and not uh, with hate and not with disdain towards God's people. They grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. And I just wanted to mention here, it says, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth according to the effectual working in the measure of every part maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. I just want to note there in that verse, it says every joint, every part, because even though God has given pastors and teachers, apostles, prophets and evangelists to perfect edify the work of the ministry in a church that's not where it stops we all play a part in edifying one another there's there's a part that everyone needs to play where it says the whole body is fitly joined together and every joint every member in this body plays a part in edifying this body um, uh, edifying the body uh, of itself in love as it says there so, you know, take that upon yourself, take that ownership upon yourself that, you know, you can play a part. Don't just leave it to everybody else to uh, build this body up. You're going to play a part as well. And that's why I definitely encourage discussion. I encourage people to get to know one another, have each other over for dinner, because I want this body to be joined together by every part and not everyone just joined to the head, you know, or the, the head that's under the true head, which is um, Jesus Christ. Now, let's just go to Hebrews 13. And we went here last week, but I'll just touch on it quickly. Uh, verse 7 to 9 says here, Remember them which have the rule over you. So, you know, we do rule in the house of God, bishops and deacons. So, you know, sometimes we don't like authority, but God has set this authority in the church. And I think as, as Christians, it's something that we need to grow and learn to do, that there are authorities that God has put in our life. And part of that growth in our, in our spiritual life is learning how to submit to the God-ordained authorities in our life, you know, whether it's in the church, whether it's at work, or whether it's at home. 
Uh, remember them which have the rule over you, who have spoken unto you the word of God. So there's one reason why God gives uh, authority in the church to, to speak unto you the word of God. Whose faith follow. So there's the example that needs to be set. Considering the end of their conversation. Jesus Christ the same yesterday and today and forever. Be not carried about with diverse and strange doctrines, for it is a good thing that the heart be established with grace, not with meats which have not profit of them that have been occupied therein. Now you remember we saw back in Ephesians 4 that not being tossed about uh, with, uh, you know, to and fro with every wind of doctrine. And the point I just want to make here is obviously God has given authority and, you know, the preachers and teachers and pastors and evangelists in the church to keep you from false doctrine and to keep you safe from false teachers and false doctrines. But the one thing I want to mention here is, you know, you don't go from, you know, let's say you're getting carried about with every winner doctrine and starting to follow this maybe one guy, this false teacher and, and getting off the wrong track. The idea here is not that you stop trusting that man and then start trusting another man. Do you know what I mean? So it's not that, you know, we, it's not that the bishops and deacons that are teaching in a church are keeping you safe by saying, hey, don't trust those guys. Now put your trust on me and, and trust what I'm telling you. Because what a bishop and a deacon is meant to be doing when they teach is pointing you back to the word of God. And that's how we're meant to be keeping you safe and saying, hey, don't trust any man. It doesn't matter how good they sound. You need to you know, test what even I preach by the word of God. And that's what's going to keep you safe. Because if you just transfer your trust from following one man to following the next hot preacher and then following the next hot preacher, you're still building your house on sand and you're not safe. So the way we keep you safe is to remind you and say, hey, you're trusting man, you're following man. You need to get in the Bible. You need to get in the word of God. Know what you believe, why you believe it. And then you'll be safe with God. Not putting your trust in a man. So, you know, we see here a couple of reasons, you know, that there's the order that has to be put in place, you know, the example, the safety from false doctrine and false teachers, um, but don't move from trusting one man to trusting another. Make sure you trust God.